Our next speaker is one of us, our nerd. He holds three degrees in chemistry, textile, and fiber engineering, and polymer science, and can pay a single cent for them. Throughout his career, he has worked for companies like Mobile Chemical Company, CIBA Group, and even NASA, where he worked as an engineer and created their aircraft. So there was this mother in the city of Atlanta, and she was pregnant. You ever seen those pregnant mothers? <laughs> and this mom, she was going in just for a regular checkup. <sighs> it was right around 36 weeks, and she was just going in to make sure everything was OK. And she went to the elevator, bing. She got off the elevator, went to the fourth floor. You know, just going in for what is a basic checkup. <laughs> you ever seen those mothers when they walk? It's just as if they're doing their dance. <laughs> teach me how to dug it. Teach me, teach me how to dug it. Teach me how to dug it. Teach me, teach me how to dug it. So this mom, as she was going in for a regular checkup, everything sort of sped up a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, I hope that's not gas. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I think the baby is coming. So they rush her to the living room. They lay her down on the table. Oh. Owie! <laughs> owie! 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 Point, 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 point. <laughs> oh, you want to get that? <laughs> owie! <laughs> so... Did you get that on my camera? <laughs> so out comes this shiny black baby boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if you've ever seen a shiny black baby boy, he's so purdy. <laughs> so this mom, like any mom, she was excited. She was elated. Oh, God, thank you for my baby. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for my baby, thank you, God. At the exact same time she was having these happy tears, God, how did this happen? How did this happen? But I'm so grateful. Oh, oh wow. But I thank you. It was like she was celebrating and she was disappointed at the same time. She was elated and she was confused. It was as if she was bipolar. <laughs> so this mom, you know, she looked down at her baby boy. She says, wow, I can't believe this happened. My son is missing some of his fingers. I thought somebody was going to cuss for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was my mom a few years ago. Probably like 18 years ago. <laughs> Some of you guys will get that later. <laughs> now you say to yourself, why did the black guy with the pink shirt on and purple bow tie come out here and just pop some fingers on us like that? <laughs> well, first of all, this is all that I have. <laughs> Number two, I want you to realize that for years, this finger mess was the thing that stopped my success. You see, guys, I remember in the ninth grade, I saw this fine girl in school. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You too young, you too young, you too young. And so, guys, you know how we do when we step to a young lady. You got to have that little swag, you know. Damn. 
Ah. And I was like, excuse me, miss. What's your name? Hello, my name is Cantus. She was like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> what is wrong with your fingers? <laughs> Ooh, I can't do it. You have the cooties. Ta-ta. So now in high school, I'm growing up thinking that I have the cooties. Anybody play sports? Any baseball players in the house? Yeah, give yourselves a big round of applause. So one day I was playing youth baseball and I used to play shortstop. And I had a, a nice line drive ball hit to me. Pow! I bobbled the ball, my glove fell off, I picked the ball up, and I threw the guy out at first base. And as I walked back over to pick up the glove, I heard a parent in the stand say, oh, look at his fingers. He's so special. <laughs> the next inning, I got up to bat. I was batting right-handed. Pow! Hit a single, ran down first base, safe. Had a few people say, oh, Look at his fingers. He's so special. The next inning, I was batting left-handed. I could bat both ways. Bow! Ran around first. Bow! Hit second, slid in. <sighs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> it was now a conversation. Oh, he's so special. So not only do I have the cooties, but I'm also special. Anybody ever seen the movie Drumline with Nick Cannon? <laughs> well, the, the blue and gold band in that movie was called Atlanta A&T University, something like that. And that was my high school band. And I was the guy that was standing in front of the band with the whistle in his mouth, the drum major. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for being a fan. <laughs> and so my very first game, it was Southwest DeKalb High School versus McNair High School, 15,000 people. It was time for the very first song, the Olympic fanfare. Don't do it all. Don't 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 do it all. Don't 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 And I'm thinking to myself, what is that flapping in the air? <laughs> do, 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 do. There it goes again. What is that flapping in the air? Now, if you've ever been in a marching band, or if you've ever seen a good marching band, they would wear what you call white marching band gloves. <laughs> and as I was directing the band, I'm thinking like, what is that flapping in the air? <laughs> I have flapping fingers. <laughs> so that night I went home. I'm thinking to myself, everybody in the stands was talking about my flapping fingers. So, okay, I'm going to do something about this. So I went home, I grabbed some scissors, some needle and thread. Yeah, today is the last day of these flapping fingers. Yes, sir. So I pulled the scissors, I had my glove up. And I was about to cut these flapping fingers off. And as I was about to cut the flapping fingers off, my mom, she busts in the bathroom. Bow! Boom! Son, what in the world are you doing? I'm like, Mom, I'm cutting my flapping fingers off. She said, what? My flapping fingers? She said, huh? I said, Mama, I'm cutting my flapping fingers off because all the people at school talking about me. She said, child, please, <laughs> put the scissors down, put the needle and thread down. She said, son, I want you to hear something. Don't you ever forget it. Quit looking at what you don't have and think about all the things you do have. Quit looking at what you don't have and think about all the things you do have. And those words through high school, through college, 
the grad school. Quit looking at what you don't have and think about all the things you do have. When I saw that next girl, I was like, oh, quit looking at what you don't have <laughs> and think about all the things you do have. You got a nice big old head. <laughs> quit looking at what you don't have and think about all the things you do have. And as I sat there, at my first job interview, blue suit, gray pinstripes, white shirt, blue tie, black shoes, they were shining. I was so fresh and so clean. <laughs> and as the guy was sitting there interviewing me, asking me questions, only thing I could hear was, walk, 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 walk. As he was talking to me, I just zoned out. I started thinking about my mess. I started thinking about when I felt like I can't or I won't or I'll never. I started thinking about that time period when I was in the laboratory in science lab. You know, you put the rubber gloves on and I picked up the beaker, the beaker of acid and my flapping fingers dipped down in the beaker of acid and I caused a little fire. Yeah, I started thinking about all of those things. But there I was in the interview and I heard my, my words from my mom. Quit looking at what you don't have and think about all the things you do have. Thank God I got the job. Give it up for my mom. You know what? I realized today that your flapping fingers, well, you don't have fingers, but I realized that my fingers, that was my mess. That was the thing that played on my psyche. See, you may not have finger mess. You may have low self-esteem mess. You may have financial mess. You may have baby daddy mess. You may have, ooh, we don't like my classroom, my teacher mess. You may have forehead mess <laughs> or five head mess. <laughs> you may have booty do mess. That's when your stomach stick out further than your booty do. <laughs> See, listen. We all have mess. But here's the thing I want you to realize today. That if you're ever going to play your A game in school, if you're ever going to play your A game in life, that you have to get over your mess. Right now, I don't care what you think. I'm the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> It was so funny, the other day I was speaking at this school, and I had left the school, did a great, you know, a great session, and this student was running after me. I'm like, what's up, dude, what? <laughs> He's like, Mr. Simmons, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> I just wanted to see where you park your car. I'm like, huh? He said, yeah, I wanted to see if you was in the blue spaces. I was like, dude, forget you. <laughs> You know, I used to tell girls when I used to go out with them, I'm like, sweetheart, we ain't got nothing to worry about tonight because your boy packing. <laughs> you see, I had to own the fact that I'm just the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers and learn how to turn my mess into my success. What about you? What's the thing that's holding you back? What's the thing that plays on your psyche? What's the thing that tells you, I can't? My family's going to struggle. I can't do it. I won't be able to do it. Are you the type of person that when you walk into a big room, you walk across the room and I wondering if anybody looking at my booty. <laughs> I, mean, I know people like that. It's like, oh. <laughs> you know, honestly, nobody is thinking about your mess but you. And for years, my mess was bothering me. And you know what, young people? It stops today. I want you to think about the things that's holding you back from being your best. You see, I don't believe that you should be the best in life. How can you measure the best? You can't measure that. But I'm encouraging you to be your best. And the only way you can be your best is if you get over your mess. Everybody hold your right hand out. Hold your right hand out. I want you to think about those things that's holding you back. Here, take my nay nay. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
put that on Instagram. <laughs> but think about your mess. Hold it out real quick. I know you're in an honor society, but you can do better. You got a 3.5 or higher, but you can do better. Your family needs you. This country needs you. What's the thing? What's that track that plays over and over again in your mind? Place that in your right hand. Place that thought there, that fear, that insecurity, that self-doubt. Put it in your right hand, close your hand. Today's the last day. This is going to bother you. No longer will this mess stop your success. You can be whatever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have whatever you want to have. If you allow your hopes to outweigh your fears, you can succeed. On the count of three, we're going to get rid of this mess today, okay? Got to find a place to throw it. See that trash can over there? We're going to shoot it in the trash can, okay? On the count of three. Now, don't hit me. Because I don't need any more mess in my life. Here we go. One, two, three, shoot. Bow, y'all. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Now, I realize you won't hear me today. Hey, unless you really know me. I'm like the coolest nerd ever. Before they had the iPhone, they had the baby phone. <laughs> yes? I was going the wrong way. I was a sexy nerd. <laughs> Bet you can't do it like me. <laughs> hey! Right? But one thing about me is that I love academic success. I've been in school 25 years. Five years of pre-K, seven years of elementary school, five years of high school, four years of college, and four more years of grad school. There you go again. All right. Shoot, boy, I was putting the white women on y'all. What? <laughs> what? Them knees ashy. Don't look at the knees ashy. I just realized my, my knees are ashy. All right. Oh, that's a dude. Those are not women. Those are guys. <laughs> All right, back over here. But I spent years in school. I love school. I love school food, too. All right. But I realized this, young people. If you're going to spend 12 or 16 or 20 years in school, you have to win in school. If you're going to succeed in life, why not succeed where you are? I believe that if you're going to be successful, it starts now. Developing those habits, doing those things that's going to cause continual success. So my life from this point, I worked at NASA, worked at Mobile Chemical Company, worked at Cibervision. Cibervision is a company that developed contact lenses. Anybody wear contact lenses? Anybody wear dailies? Focus daily. Thank you for paying my mortgage. <laughs> when I worked at NASA, I worked with aircraft and rockets and shuttles and worked with materials, and I raised stuff in there and just drop it. Just like, boom! It didn't work. <laughs> and year after year after year, made companies millions and billions of dollars from things that I knew within my big head. But there are three things that I believe that today, if you lay hold of these three things, whatever you want to do and be in life, you can get there. I believe there's another level of success for you. Personally, in your chapters, on your campus, within your families, there's another level. I can't stand watching the news. I'm like allergic to the news now. There's something going on all the time. Television has been created to tell a vision. So you have to be very aware of what, you, that was, you can tweak that. <laughs> at Cantor Simmons, my mama looks at my hashtag. <laughs> all right? But television tells a vision. So you have to be very cautious 
of what you allow to come through your eye gate, what goes through your ears, because those things get down into your heart. And whatever's in your heart, it will manifest. The good book says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he will be. If you think you're sorry, you're going to be what? If you think you're lazy, you're probably going to be lazy. If you think you're good looking, <laughs> the fine, sassy black man. But there are three things that I want to impress upon you from this day forward that you can make your life whatever it wants to be. I want to show you a really cool friend that I have. His name is Donkey. Look at this donkey. Look where he's hanging out. It's beautiful, isn't it? But look at that word above donkey's head, assignment. A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T. Normally when I come to schools, I will have some students on stage. You probably see this on some of my YouTube videos. I have students on stage, and we do this little letter thing. But if you look at that word assignment, there's a huge message in this word assignment. There's an assignment that's meant for everyone in this room. M-E-N-T. The A is invisible. <laughs> but there's something unique about you that's meant for you to do. Think about it for a second. We all have eyes. We have legs. We have fingers. Some have more than others. <laughs> but we all look different. There's something unique about you. Not only that, but in the word assignment, you'll see this phrase sign, S-I-G-N. There are signs or signs in your life to help you identify your assignment. Your gifts, your talents, your majors, the things that make you happy, the things that make you cry. All of those are there for a reason. I love watching American Idol. The, very, you know, the first few weeks when it starts, and you have those clowns on stage that's like, dude, you can't sing. But why are you trying to sing? What gifts do you have that have been implanted there? And it's like, wow, I like this. I'm pretty good at this. All those are signs to help, help you identify your assignment. But look in that word assignment, you see this small phrase, I-G-N. Now, in a few communities in Atlanta, they don't say the word ignorant. They say ignorant. You are so ignorant. I-G-N, right? You are so ignorant. Hide your kids, hide your wife. <laughs> right? But young people, here's the thing. If you are ignorant of your life's assignment, you go through life living like the first three letters of assignment. And you know what? Right now, there are a lot of students, there are a lot of adults, there are a lot of people in this world who are living like donkeys. What's donkey living? Donkey living is when you hate to get up on Monday morning. Donkey living is when you only look forward to the weekend. Donkey living is when you're excited on the 1st and the 15th. But you see, people who are living in their assignment, they forget what day it is. People who live in their assignment doing what they're passionate about, I don't care what's going on, every day is a happy day. And I want you to realize this, for you to play your A game, it's imperative that you find your assignment. You see, school, elementary school, middle school, high school, undergrad, college, grad school, certificates, workshops, dissertation, conferences, all of those are keys to help you to become the best in your assignment. You see, school is all about getting keys. I realized that if I wanted to be a research scientist, I had to get certain keys to unlock the doors that say research scientists. I can't pop up at NASA like, boo, what's up? I'm a middle school certificate owner. No, I had to come with my A game and have the proper key to unlock those doors. So you ask yourself, okay, why am I back in school? What am I doing in school again? I was in school 20 years ago, and I'm back? Obviously, there's a key that you need to unlock a door. 
but you want to make sure you unlock the doors that go along with your assignment. Let me say this to you, and don't take it the wrong way, but take it. You can't do what you did 20 years ago. It's not working. There was a time period where you could go to school, get a degree, and you come out of school, and you got a job. That's not happening anymore. Today, we live in a society that's so open, that's so free, where you can start to create whatever you want to create. Having a degree is important. But I want you to realize this. Education is not the key to success. Wait for it. Wait for it. You are the key to success. I know a lot of educated people who are broke. I know a lot of educated people who are sad. I know a lot of educated people who are living like a donkey. But you are the key to success. Lay hold of the opportunities you have right now so you can do something with them. I like Beyonce. Single lady, oh, the single lady. Ba, 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 right? But one thing about Beyonce, Beyonce is trying to be Beyonce. I don't see Beyonce trying to do something that she's not. So why are you trying to do something that you're not? The lights, they're lights. The microphone is a microphone. The chairs are chairs. We don't need any more copies. You were born an original, so don't live life like a copy. Understand your assignment. Number two, action. Now, you guys know what this is, right? I forgot the name of it. Who? Slate. Slate. Well, it's like a movie tapper. <laughs> right? And so basically it says, action. And what it does, when I shoot videos on YouTube or whatever, I take my video camera, my microphone, and I say, click. It puts a click here, and it puts a click on the video. Action. I'm back in school. I just had a baby. I just left a conference. I just read a book. I just broke up with my boyfriend. Action. What are you doing with the time and the experiences, the books that you're reading? What action are you taking? I ask myself this. Why is it that the world's wealthiest people are dropouts? Is it because they dropped out? No. They took action on something. And I want to impress upon you everything that you've heard this week from great speakers and seminar leaders and the books you've had and the conversations you had. Take some action. If you want to be successful, it's all about action. Nothing just happens in life. You have to take some action. So when you leave here on July 26th and you go back to your school, you go back to your community, what are those one, two, or three things that you can go take action on? Now, my specialty is in the area of academic success. And I know that you can do more in the classroom. I've had conversations with you, some of you guys. Okay? And due to time, I'm going to give you these. But these are the 7.25 <laughs> habits <laughs> and skills that you have to develop in school. You see how, you see how I turn my, my, mess, my mess into my message? <laughs> 7.25. One person told me, Kenneth is the coolest guy with 7.25 fingers. But I was like, cool, I'm about to own that. <laughs> right? But here are things you take action on. These are skills that you must develop. Listening. Think about it. 80% of what you've been doing this last few days is what? Listening. 80% of what you do every day in class is all about what? Listening. That's a skill that you must develop. Listen to the what, the who, and the why. Getting yourself in a position where you don't fall asleep when somebody's talking. Listening. Number two, note taking. Here's a real, real quick, uh, cool tip real quick. I'm going to steal this. I'm going to give it back. Note taking. This is what I call my 50-50 note taking strategy. Take a piece of paper. 
put a dotted line down the middle. When you're taking notes in class, fold it or whatever, just put a dotted line down the middle. When you're in class, take all of your classroom notes on the left-hand side. Take those notes. And don't just transcribe. Listen and write down the most important information. And then, during your study time at home, make up potential test questions that go with the notes on the left-hand side. 50-50 note-taking strategy. Classroom notes, and on the right-hand side, you make up test questions. You see, the best way to prepare for tests is by taking tests. If you're ever going to ace a test, you need to spend time taking tests to ace that test. You just don't get in a car and say, hey, or go down to the driver's license place and say, hey, I want to take the test. No, you do what? You take the test of driving a car so you can drive a car. Football players play the game at practice so they can play the game in the game. The third skill you must develop is self-managing. I don't believe in time management. How can you manage time? We all got 24 hours. <laughs> ooh, Cantus, ooh, I need to manage my time more. No, you don't need to manage your time anymore. You need to manage yourself. You need to manage yourself. Now, normally, if I have time, I would give someone $168. Anybody want some money? <laughs> but we got stacks on debt. We got stacks on debt. <laughs> but you need to start seeing your time like money, right? So let's say if I got $168 here, and we know you sleep about, you know, seven days a week, maybe like eight hours a night, 56 hours, sleep a little longer in the weekend. Let's say 60 hours of sleep. You take $60. From yourself, $60 is gone, right? You know you got time in class, you may take three hours, 16 hours, whatever it may be. That's still more time. Oh, I got to go to work. You may have 40 hours or 20 hours. If it's 40 hours, you take $40. I'm a part of extracurricular activity, 10 hours a week. I got some big head kids. Oh, oh, 12 hours a week. I got a little boo thing. <sighs> I get a boo thing sometime. Woo! <laughs> oh, wow. I hadn't talked about eating. I hadn't talked about cleaning. I hadn't talked about driving back and forth. See, you can't manage time, but you can manage yourself. So whatever needs to take place to manage yourself, do that. Take action on that. Cut off some stuff. Young people, college students spend about 27 hours a week on social media, on your cell phone. Like, I have to just take my cell phone and just throw it. Then get it eight hours later. Bing, text messages. Bing, poke. Bing, Instagram. Ooh, ouch, you know? Just, it's a distraction. Self-managing, focusing. Focus, focus, focus. How do you get rid of distractions? It's by getting rid of distractions. Your brain is made to only focus on one thing at a time. I can prove it. Everybody, real quickly, in your mind, count from one to 10 in your mind. Ready, set, go. Now say your name. Say your name. What happened to the count? It stopped, right? And that's the same thing that happens. You will start studying, working on something, working on your assignment, then somebody will poke you on Facebook. Is the poke button still on Facebook? Sometimes, okay. You're working on something and you get a telephone call. You're working on something and you're watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you're working on something. And what happens, you're constantly going through this thing of distractions because you don't know how to focus. Focus is like a muscle. You have to zoom in on it. This is about to be real intimate. That's what focus is. <laughs> Don't be changing your status on Facebook talking about I'm in a relationship. But that's what focus is all about. Another skill, studying. Listen, I got a friend, his name is B-U-T-T. And I had to train my B-U-T-T, not the S-I-T on the B-E-D when trying to S-T-U-D-Y-I-N-G. Because every time he would S-I-T on the B-E-D while trying to S-T-U-D-Y-I-N-G, he would always fall A-S-L-E-E-P. <laughs> Listen, the bed 
is not made for studying. The bed is not made for studying. The bed is made for two things. <laughs> for sleeping and married people. Holler at your boy. Holler at your boy. Holler at your boy. <laughs> Listen, what study is concerned, find that boring place. You go stick your head in the corner and study. Get rid of the distractions. Study. Because if you don't know how to properly study, if you don't know how to properly read, if you don't properly think, properly research, you will never, ever be able to play your A game. You can't have negative thoughts, trash in, trash out. That's why you got to be very aware of your surroundings. Find a place to study where it's a pleasant place. If you got to build you a study chamber, the only thing you do in that study chamber is study. Notice when you go home, you go to the kitchen to do what? You sit on the sofa to do what? You go to the bathroom to do what? <laughs> exactly. So if you are trying to study in the same place that you eat, your body is like chicken or calculus, hot dogs or biology, ESPN or psychology, lifetime or math. You're confusing yourself. But when you sit in your study spot, the only thing you do is play books. You don't play with your Wii. You play with your biology in that spot. Take action, not only in school, but in life. Listen, you're going back to your campus, do something different. Cause a riot at your school, a good riot. <laughs> Cause things to be different, take action. If you are a leader, be a leader. Be the cool leader. Be the leader that has all the A's. Whoever said the whole school can have all A's? Whoever said the whole school could be on the honor roll? Whoever said that? Right now in our country, 7,000 students drop out of school every single day. 1.3 million school students didn't graduate last year. One out of three college freshmen, one, two, three, only one of them will graduate in 45 years and find a job in their career field. You don't have to be a part of the statistic. Take action. Here's the third thing as I close. Your attitude. Your attitude. There's some things in life that you don't want to do. I understand. I know you just want to drop out of class and go get a job, but the job says, hey, we need this certain degree. We need a certain certificate. We need you to know this. Or there's some things that you may not want to do on your job. If you're working at McDonald's, you'd be the best McDonald's server ever. If you're cleaning the bathrooms as a part-time job, you'd be the best at cleaning the bathroom. Because what you do at this level will determine your promotion to the next level. You don't go to the fifth grade until you pass the fourth grade. And some of you guys are at levels right now. And for you to get to the next level, maybe it's in leadership. If you want to go to the next level, step your game up. There was these two boys in the city of L.A., and they saw Kobe Bryant walking down the streets of L.A. So these two guys decided to say, hey, Mr. Bryant, if you don't mind, sir, can we shoot the basketball with you? Mr. Bryant was like, sure. Yeah, you shoot the basketball with me. He said, guys, just meet me at the gym at 5 o'clock. They were like, for real? He was like, yeah, guys, you know, five o'clock. Mr. Bryant, are you serious? So the next day, well, that evening they went home. They got on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah! Shooting basketball with Kobe Bryant tomorrow. They told their friends, went down to Foot Locker, got them some new J's, new shorts. It was ready. They went to the gym, got there an hour early at four o'clock, ready to meet Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba. They started stretching. They was really excited, started shooting the basketball around. 4.30 came. They was like, man, I can't believe this dude getting something down. What? <laughs> 4.30, 4.45, these guys are getting excited. Yeah. Looking for Kobe. Man, I can't believe this. 5 o'clock comes. Bam, he's coming. Woo! 5.15. Run a little late. 
5.30, She didn't say 5 o'clock, right? 6 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Man, this dude stood us up. They went back home, got on Facebook, Twitter. Kobe Bryant sucks. The very next day in the city of L.A., guess who they see? Kobe Bryant again. Now, this time they have a little bass in their voice. Mr. Bryant, Mr. Bryant, you told us to meet you at the gym at 5 o'clock. She's like, hold on, guys, hold on, hold on. Mr. Bryant, we came to play basketball with you. You gave us an invitation. He's like, yeah, guys, I did. But Mr. Bryant, we was at the gym. You were not there. He was like, guys, yes, I was. No, you were not. Guys, I'm there every morning. You see, these young men had the attitude of an average person. And if you're ever going to play your A game, you have to change your attitude, change your actions, and move in your assignment in such a way that nobody can stop you. Mr. Bryant realized that he's going to be the best at his game, the best at his craft, that he's going to get up earlier than anybody ever will to work on his game. What about you? What attitudes do you have to make you stand out? What attitudes do you have about yourself, about your family, about your, your organization? Change the way you think, you will change your actions. The more and more you change your actions, you'll change your attitude. Now, before I leave today, have you guys enjoyed this? You guys enjoyed this? Because you're here today, I want to give you a, a, a really cool gift. If you go to 7.25.com, that's pretty cool, right? 7.25.com, free videos, free ebook, a lot of cool things to help you succeed wherever you may be. As I close, I'm going to tell you about my dad. My dad wasn't at the hospital uh, the day my mom was pushing my, pushing my big head out. So my dad, he got stuck in Chicago on a business trip. And while he was there, my mom called him. Simmons, 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 our new baby boy is here. Simmons, 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 we got a newborn baby. He's like, oh, cool, cool. But Simmons, oh, newborn baby. He's missing so much. <laughs> my dad said, what? Oh, newborn baby, he didn't start his finger. He's like, sweetie, I need you to calm down. I need you to articulate. She said, Simmons, our newborn baby, he's missing some of his fingers. One more time, what you say? <laughs> our newborn baby is missing some of his fingers. Hmm, really? Okay, okay, okay. In a very confident voice, my dad said this. He said, sweetheart, he said, sugar, he said, honey lumps. It's going to be okay. Even though our baby boy is missing some of his fingers, our baby boy, he will still be great. Phi Theta Kappa, Kansas Simmons believes you guys are great. Play your A game. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much.